What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new portable power station. This is the Vitoman Flash Speed 600. Taking a look at some of the specs, this has a 499 watt hour LiPo 4 battery, a 600 watt power handling with a peak of 1200 watts, a 200 watt solar charging input, and is very lightweight at only 15.9 pounds. Taking a look inside the box, you have your user manual, a sheet of stickers, a car cigarette charging adapter, a USB-A to USB-C cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a AC charging adapter, and as you can see, it's only a cord that plugs directly into the port here, so you do not need an external charging brick. And then last but not least, you have the actual power station itself. So taking a look at the power station, this is definitely a nice and modern looking unit. The design is exactly the same as the Flash Speed 1000 and 1500, except it's a lot smaller and more compact. As you can see up top, you do have these two carrying handles and they do feel nice and sturdy, well made. But because of how light this power station is, I usually just find myself carrying it with one handle. Up top here, just like the bigger units, you also have a built-in storage compartment. So you can put your USB cables in there, your charging cable. And just like that, they are neatly stored away inside the unit. This also makes it easier to store and transport as all you got to do is take the power station and automatically you already have all your cables with you. Taking a look at your ports right up here, you have your inputs, you have your AC input, DC input and solar charging input. And as you can see, it is an Anderson port right down here. You have your DC outputs, you have your barrel connector, and then you have your car cigarette adapter. Right over here, you have your USB ports. So you have two fast charge USB-A ports and two 100 watt USB-C ports. Always good to see that as a lot of cheaper power stations might give you a 100 watt and 60 watt, and even some a 60 watt and 30 watt. So always good to see that full 100 watt on both ports. And then right down here, you have your two AC outputs. As I said earlier, these put out a maximum of 600 watts with a peak of 1500 watts. You do not have any ports on the side of the unit, but on back you do have this bright LED bar and this has low, medium, and high modes. And then you also have a strobe and SOS mode. I have my studio lights on, so let me go ahead and turn those off. Low, medium, high. So as you can see, definitely a very bright light. So if you need to light something up in a camp area, or maybe working on a car, whatever it might be, this is definitely gonna do the job. When it comes to charging, as I just said, you have three different ways you can charge this. First off, you have your AC input, and this does a maximum of 400 watts, and this can take it from zero to 80 in only one hour. Next, you have your solar input. This can do a max of 200 watts, which charges it from zero to 80 in two to four hours. And last, you can also charge it from your car, and this will take it from zero to 80 in 3.5 hours. And this does support pass-through charging, so as you're charging the power station, you can also charge other items from the power station as well. All right, so I drained this power station from 100% to zero with a 440 watt load, and it put out a total of 411 watt hours. Doing the math, that gives this unit a usable capacity of 82.3%. Most power stations of this size put out about 80 to 85% on average, so this is right there on par with most other units. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the inverter on this. As I said earlier, this is ready to do 600 watts with a peak of 1200 watts. When it comes to regular technology, 600 watts is a lot of power. Any regular tech you own is gonna be a walk in the park for this power station. But let's go ahead and plug some things up and see where we get to. So right now I have my MacBook Pro. This is the 14 inch model. It has about 80% battery right now, so it might not be charging at that high of a speed. And as you can see, it's only pulling 18 watts. If that was on low battery, it would probably pull about 70 to 80 watts. Right here, I have a portable gaming console similar to something like the Steam Deck. So with both of these connected, as you can see, we're a little over 100 watts, about 104, 106. Right here, I have a Samsung tablet. Let me go ahead and add that in as well. Now we're at about 114. All right, so the laptop wasn't drawing too much, so I went ahead and swapped that out with a high-speed power bank just to put a little more load on this. And I also added my cell phone into the mix. As you can see, we're pulling about 162 watts now. So again, we have a console, cell phone, tablet, and power bank charging. And that's only pulling that. So any technology, whether that be a drone, camera, whatever it might be, is going to be no problem for this power station. You still have plenty of power to power other things as well. So let me go ahead and add a large load on this. And let's see if it can do that 600 watts as it's rated for. 
All right, so I went ahead and plugged something in, which is another power station, and this pulls about 460 around there when it's charging. And as you can see, the power station plus all this technology, we're pulling 598 watts, just barely under that 600 watt limit. I've tested many, many power stations from Vitoman, and in my experience, they usually perform at about 50 or 60 watts above their rated power handling. So you should be able to run about 650, 660 on this, and it'll maintain that load no problem at all. Another cool thing about this power station is it has what is called VBeyond technology. What this does is run higher powered appliances at lower wattages. So say if I want to run a 1500 watt heater on this, the VBeyond technology works with items up to 1500 watts. With a regular power station of this size, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. It's just going to power it on. It's going to go over the limit and it's going to trip. But what this would do is instead of running it at 1500 watts, it'll deliver less power to that heater and run it at its 600 watt limit, or like I said, around 650, 660. So definitely very cool to have that technology as this allows you to do a lot more with a small power station of this size. You should be able to run a mini fridge with this or even a full size fridge, a small heater. So definitely a very versatile unit that's gonna be good to do a lot of things while still being very portable. Just to max this out right here, I have a large Bluetooth speaker. This charges with the AC adapter. Charge somewhere around 40, 50 watts. So let's see if that shuts it off or what happens. 626. So we're about 30 watts over the rated limit. I'm gonna go ahead and let it run that way for a while and see if it shuts off or if it's able to maintain that load. All right, so it's been about four minutes now and it's still running that load, no problem at all. So as you can see, the inverter does work as advertised. I know there's a lot of people that get nervous when it comes to storing batteries like this in their house, but rest assured you don't have anything to worry about as all Vitoman power stations come with their life BMS protection. This continuously monitors and protects the power station from over voltage, short circuits, temperatures, and many other things as well. Overall, this is definitely a solid power station. It's very compact, it performs well, and best of all, it's also very affordable as well. So overall, if you happen to be shopping for a compact portable power station, I would highly, highly recommend this one here, which again is the Vitoman Flash Speed 600. If you would like to purchase or get more information, I'll also put the link in the description as well. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.